Philadelphia, baby, you're gonna love it. Best sports fans in the world. Actually the worst, but that's what makes them the best. All right, I think we are all set. What is going on, everybody? Welcome in to episode number 444 of Underground Sports Philadelphia. It's KB and Matt coming at you from Underground Studios. Got a lot to dive into about the fightings, about the Sixers, and uh, Flyers Twitter somehow making its way back to my Twitter timeline today. Uh, it's been a while. But, of course, before we get started, make sure you're following us on the socials at UndergroundPHI on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, we just announced today on Twitter we're giving away uh, an issue of Wolverine number 22 comic book with the Brian Dawkins variant cover. It's our pinned tweet on Twitter. Go check that out. Enter to win an issue of that. We are announcing the winner next month. Uh, follow Matt on Twitter at Matt Castorino. Follow me at KBIZZL311. Check out the website, undergroundsportsphiladelphia.com, for all of our written content. Subscribe to the podcast feed on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. We are there, and leave those five-star ratings and reviews. And, of course, subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. Hit the like button, click the bell icon, and, of course, comment down below how you're feeling about the Phils, the Sixers, or anybody else in between. Uh, and be a friend, tell a friend, and share the channel with your people. Uh, big thank you to our sponsors who make this show happen. Main Auto LLC, Douche Arms Pro Foot, Security 21 Security Systems, Paul J. Gillespie Incorporated, Mark Ronchetti, CPA LLC, and the Dental Wellness Center of Vineland. Tomahawk Shades, go to TomahawkShades.com, use promo code USP for 25% off your entire order, and that includes the new Tomahawk RX prescription lenses for both sunglasses and blue light glasses. That's TomahawkShades.com, promo code USP for 25% off your order. Kenwood Beer, go to KenwoodBeer.com and use the Kenny Tracker to see who's got Kenwood Beer on tap in the Philadelphia area. you got to be 21 or older to do so, and of course, please drink responsibly. What's going on, Matt? Living the dream. Uh, it has been a while since you've been in the studio, back from the big C bus. Uh, and while you were away, uh, the Sixers decided to make a flurry of moves, kind of as we predicted, rebuilding uh, a bit of the Houston Rockets and kind of making Daryl Morey's former you know, Lego Tower <laughs> now live in Philadelphia. Um, your thoughts so far on Sixers free agency? Yeah, so uh, Melton... We acquired him on draft night uh, via trade, and he seems like a, a good fit with this team and was a player on, on the Grizzlies that I think very transferable to what we want here. Uh, then, you, you know, it's some of the greatest hits. P.J. Tucker <laughs> uh, announced as a sixer. Fantastic. Daniel House. Um, you know, so, like, I think those three players are pretty good additions. I, I don't think that's uh, – I don't know. I, I don't think those are the worst moves. And I think, again, you're adding – Three of those guys, P.J. Tucker's a, a deal that I'm not in love with because it's three years guaranteed as well. You know, someone at his age, you don't really necessarily want to be handing that kind of uh, money out, but it's also like $10 million. Um, that's nothing. But in three years, that's going to be like the mid-level. That's going to yeah. be like the, the vet minimum is going to be that. So, like, you know, uh, we have to remember that too, that, uh, you know, every every four or five years, we always see contracts get much better, you know, in those last stages, but it's hard to swallow. I think paying a 40 year old, that kind of money, uh, you know, but I think it's, it's a good pivot by the Sixers. It's not the most imaginative, um, but I think we're still like a piece away. And I, I think that's maybe why the hardened contract hasn't been settled just yet is because the Sixers are trying to kind of bleed everything out. I think over the next few days, you're going to get a lot of this wrapped up because uh, today's the day where, uh, restricted free agents are, you know, are more likely to get uh, qualifying offers from another team, um, you know, because of the there's weird moratorium mm -hmm. rules on, and things like that. So, yeah, I, th I think over the next like two or three days, you might see a little more action in this. It feels like there's a little bit of a Durant and Kyrie Irving sized plug in a lot of in like a lot of NBA transactions now because I think everyone's trying to scramble still and figure out how they could perhaps acquire. Uh, Either of them, really, it seems like Durant's the only one really garnering a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. But even him, there's a very limited market on because, you know, the Venn diagram of teams that are good enough and have enough assets and would have 
enough left over <laughs> upon acquiring Durant to still, you know, be a, a team that's that's going to be contending for a championship is very, very small, if it exists at all, actually. I'm not sure that it actually does, which is part of the, the problem, but it does feel like the league has kind of been at a standstill uh, to try and figure out where to move from here when you find out that Kevin Durant is available for trade. Hey, KD, have you ever heard of this place called Oklahoma City? <laughs> Ironically, like, the spot. They are, that, like, uh, one of the few. One of the spots that he could edit, which would be fantastic uh, for for writing's sake. Uh, let's also not forget DeAnthony Melton, drafted by the Rockets yeah. uh, before Daryl. Well, we left. also got Trevlin Queen, who, um, G-League MVP, <laughs> Uh, and got some time with the Rockets as well. Right after so, Daryl left. I mean, what are you going to do? He's got to cover all the tracks. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and, of course, the, the big rumor still is Eric Gordon. Yeah, Eric Gordon is out there. Um, we'll see about that. It, it doesn't seem likely to really materialize at this point. Um, I would still rather have Tobias on this team than Eric Gordon. Yeah, I think sometimes, like... Tobias isn't amazing, but I think sometimes you get a little tunnel vision with him uh, and, you know, wanting him off this team. And I, I think that can be a little short-sighted at times when you look at who you're trying to move him on for. It just, I'm not sure that that's totally worth it. Um, it's similar to like uh, Eric Bledsoe got waived. People are like filming at the mouth from it. It's like, that's not, we don't need Eric Bledsoe. I don't yeah. know how to tell you that. But this team definitely needs another uh, like capable wing player. I think that's that would make this a, a good off season for the Sixers. I think l- looking at this on paper, to me, they're still not like the best team in the East, but they're in like, I would say the tier of contender. Um, but they, I, I'd say their path to like a championship is maybe a little more thin than some other teams and a little more, you know, you'd have a little bit more of a balancing act. Um, but that path is still there. And a lot of it is going to depend too on just how, this offseason goes in, in the next you know few days and weeks any additions we make but it's going to depend a lot on you know how Harden comes back how healthy he is and um if Doc is willing to trust someone like Paul Reed and you know, we saw Jaden Springer last night looking very very nice in summer league those are those are the guys on the edges that I think the regular season is simultaneously very important and not important at all mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know we, we'd really like I think this year to see some of those guys get more minutes and maybe do some uh, some more expert load management and and keeping guys in good shape and condition because this is a team that has just gotten bad luck in the playoffs with injuries and you now have PJ Tucker who's an old man um, Harden who you know has also had issues with like soft tissue stuff over the course of his career so um, it's going to be like uh, I think this is going to be the bubble wrap season just like keep everyone together because this team is built like for the playoffs clearly but you know you're going to have to kind of manage through those 82 games with this team, I think. Well, this is just in from uh, Jake Fisher. Uh, one additional free agent note that he has been told is that the third year of P.J. Tucker's three-year $33 million deal with the Sixers is a player option. Well, it's <laughs> he's taking that at 40 years old. He yeah. is taking $10 million, as most people would. Um, I would be shocked if P.J. Tucker is <laughs> opting out and getting like another like two-year deal or something. I, I don't know. I don't know what situation would, would be like for him to get that. So, your thoughts on the the Michael Rubin all white party? <laughs> um, I I mean maybe I'm just not rich enough. I don't get the appeal of an all white party. But Me hey, either. Uh, live your life. I saw a picture of Drake there, and he was of course not dressed in all white. He was dressed in like a cream, which I like cream, but you don't show up to an all white party in cream. Get better at that. But, um, yeah. I, you know what, maybe it's just a, a real roundabout way of getting like James Harden to sign for less money or something. Um, couldn't help but notice the picture of Donovan Mitchell with uh, <laughs> with a few of the boys. That was nice. Um, Donovan, we were so wrong. We were so yeah. wrong. Uh, please forgive us and let, let us make it up to you by uh, by by rooting for you. Adidas will uh, <laughs> will buy all the gear you want. We'll we'll do whatever you. Uh, we will help you get Joel Embiid to be an Adidas athlete. <laughs> Yeah, we'll uh, we'll 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 stuff the ballots for you, you know, because that's what happens in Philadelphia. But uh, but apparently, Joel obviously there, James Harden obviously there, Tyrese Maxey was there, and PJ Tucker was there, um, as they were all on stage with PJ Tucker was physically there. I saw a video of him. He was checked out. I mean, lights were on, nobody home on that one. 
Many many a picture of PJ Tucker though flowing on the Instagram. He looked like he had a great time. Good uh, very very interesting uh, for Michael Rubin to <laughs> be selling his shares in the Sixers and the Devils, and then boom, here you are with it means with the boys. It means uh, tampering isn't a serious charge for him anymore. You know that's that's a good thing about this now. Yeah. Um. So Sixers just doing the damn thing, and we'll see how summer league continues to progress. Apparently. The the hope for the the rest of the off season is that it will be, you know, Paul Reed and Charles Bassey as the backup center to Joel Embiid, which it's like that scene from SpongeBob. It's what we've been waiting for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's um. Again, I I think we we had talked about this. It, it reminded me a lot of the Maxi situation where we realized in the playoffs Maxi should have gotten a lot more time than he did, and mm-hmm. that yeah, I think that was part of the reason. Uh, that he was such a more involved player uh, this past regular season, and you hope that it's the same for that duo there. And um, Paul Reed, especially, I think, has shown like he's a very capable player. It's just like some decision making stuff that that has to improve. But you'd imagine that comes with more playing time. So, um, yeah, I, I'm I'm excited about those two getting that opportunity. I I think this this roster is it's good like i i I think this is a a good spot it's obviously not perfect there are flaws for sure um but i would also say like you can nitpick a lot of rosters uh even the ones at the very top of the conference and say you know what about this what about that so uh no one has like the perfect roster right there's no like (laughs) golden state warriors with kd right right? where it's just like yeah what do you even do to stop like i think a lot is gonna have to go right for the sixers to win a championship um but i do think that pathway is there i do think like there is you could you could tell me right now the Sixers won a championship this year, and I don't think that's the craziest thing to say. And uh, let's not forget Daniel House, notorious uh, horny boy in the bubble. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> God bless him. When I saw that, I was like, why does his name sound familiar? And then I looked, and I was like, ah, he's the one that got booted from the bubble. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe uh, decision-making is something he needs to improve on, too, but... Well, at least we know James Harden won't be bringing Tyrese Maxey to the strip club anymore. Yeah, he's It'll got be a, Daniel House. He's got a friend. They got to relive the glory days. Yeah. Um, Matt, the the fills are on fire. It's amazing. It's a beautiful thing. It is currently July sixth, and right now our Philadelphia Phillies are in a wild card spot. Not only that, they're above five hundred. The bats are humming. The bees are buzzing. Um, I'm just looking at this on baseball reference. So, um, should the Phillies win tonight, which they've done quite a bit. In fact, a lot of people have done quite a bit of winning against the nationals. So Joe Girardi was 22 and 29 as manager this year. Rob Thompson currently at 21 and nine. So you can match Joe Girardi's, uh, win total in 20 less games, 21 and nine. And he is only the second, uh, Philly's manager to like take over in season and win 20 of their first 30 games. Baseball's stupid. That's, I mean, that's really what it, that's, that's all it comes down to is that baseball is just like such a dumb sport. Yeah. Uh, so the Nationals have 29 losses already, uh, just in their division. They're six and 29. That's, that's rough. And they are one in 18, I believe, since Memorial Day. <laughs> oh, man. That is that is brutal. Um, good win, good win, series win against the Cardinals this weekend too. That was huge. Um, Sunday night baseball win, prime time Sold Phillies out winning. Crowd. Corey Knievel like a great outing. <laughs> you just like check it off a wish it. list. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot. It's crazy. We were waiting on this this shoe to drop, and it just hasn't yet. Um, although the injury bug is still ravaging this team. Um, I don't think I've been on since Bryce had to get uh, surgery and um, he doesn't have like a clear timetable for this season. That hurts, you know, and that, that will affect this team, I'm sure. But, um, you know, you're good. I think, like we mentioned before, I think you're going to go into the trade deadline now with an actual like mandate to improve. Mm-hmm. And that's with like a tangible, reasonable opinion that this team is good <laughs> and like can make the playoffs right now on on baseball reference i got a 71.3 chance to make the postseason i can't remember like, the last time their chances were like a high. month ago i remember doing this and it was like 10 percent. like it's just the the, the the change 
has been um, so different, so different with this team. And, you know, we've seen the offense come alive. I think we're getting a lot more of the Phillies that uh, we were branded and marketed, you know, in like March and April. We're getting a lot of that now. You know, it's it's actually turned into one of the best offenses in baseball. Um, you know, so that's nice. That's nice to see that we're actually, we're actually getting there at, at this point. Yeah. I think third in runs in baseball right now. Um, yeah. And it's a, it just sucks that we had not a, a, an easy start in terms of like our own performance, but also that we played the Mets so damn much. Mm-hmm. Um, and that just put us in such a hole in the division because I think if our if those series are a little more spread out and not like 95% of them done by uh, Memorial day, like this team is in could potentially be in a division race. The division is, is gone. Um, and somehow the Braves have worked themselves into the division conversation, which is, I'm still saying the division is somehow open simply because I, I saw this tweet it. last night from Corey Seidman. The Phillies still play the nationals 13 times this year. That's and that's huge, but I I think I I love watching Mets fans get like sweat and get a little uncomfortable with like maybe losing this division lead to the Braves or whatever. But I think we have to remember too the Mets have been doing this without their two best pitchers. Um, and I mean, it's not did, guaranteed that they come back this season. Of course, did right? lose one nothing on a Scherzer night last night <laughs> yeah, to the Reds. But like you know, like it's um. It's not unreasonable for a, a Mets fan to be like, nah, you know, like this is this is a little different than years past. But we hear that a lot from uh, from that side of New York, so we'll see. But um, yeah, I, I just I, I think the Mets they've they've built up such a good buffer on us that it's hard to really imagine re- like what it's it's an eight game difference now. Um, I think that's tough. I think it's really all about the wild card, which the Phillies have done some decent work for themselves too. Uh, you know that Cardinal series. Um, they played the Padres well, um, and you still have like games against the Braves, which which will matter for the Wild. Still card. some against the Mets as well. Yeah. Um, so you you can they are like, they are they seven back with a lot more than seventeen to play. I'll say that. <laughs> right. You know that's <laughs> history's on on your side there. That's for sure. But and I think the fun part about this too, uh, as we look at the NL East, brought to you by uh, our homies over at Pickup. Go to playpickup.com. Start playing the hottest headlines in sports. Rack up points on your fan profiles. Cash them in for prizes. That's playpickup.com. The NL East run differential has really evened out over the past couple of weeks. Yeah. Like, there is only a three-run difference between the Phillies and Mets, where the Mets are at plus 59, the Braves are at plus 58, and the Phillies are at plus 56. That, to me, you know, you and I have talked about what run differential typically means. That to me is speaking like these three teams are going to be slugging it out, and the trade deadline's really going to determine like a whole lot in this division. Trade deadline is going to be tough too because what the Phillies' needs are the needs of like every other contending team. It's such a um, seller's market. the The Phillies need probably another starter, um, and so does everyone else. Especially like Phillies have been, we've been unlucky with like uh, batting injuries, and I'm not going to mm-hmm. one now. Uh, pitchers have been like the big casualty. You know, you look at a lot of like the the top pitchers this year, and, and guys have already you know missed some time or you know are out till September or whatever dealing with day to day. So like Phillies, thankfully, have kind of avoided a lot of that. Um, obviously, you know Bryce being injured, Gene being injured hasn't been great, but you know I think you can you can work through that at least. Mm-hmm. Um, There's a lot of contenders that are in that situation where it's not only just not only do they need a starter, they need a starter. You yeah. know. Um, so yeah, the the Phillies are gonna have a lot of competition there for the trade deadline. It's stupid, like the run differential. It's it's crazy too because you know, it's not the be all end all, but you look at the Phillies and and they're so close to to the the Braves and yet Mets yet, you know, you're talking like a you know a seven game win difference despite you know largely performing around the same level. Yankees are at plus one fifty nine. It's insane. <laughs> Just uh, I can't Dodgers wait for them. One forty three. I can't wait for them in total, like just baseball fashion, like lose in the first round. Yes, because <laughs> that's just that's just the way it always goes. Um, Nationals with the worst at minus one twenty nine. Yeah, it's uh, gotta be a tough time to be a Nationals fan. I'll say that. You know, that's um, and I know we bring up the schedule a ton on this show too, but obviously the Phillies playing the Nationals tonight and tomorrow. 
four games in St. Louis, which will be huge in terms of the wild card, then two on the road against Toronto, and then three in the most dreaded place in the world, Miami. That, that Toronto series is going to be a little interesting, tell you that much. We're going to find out a little bit. <laughs> find out a little bit about this team. And then it's the All-Star break. And then you come back from the All-Star break, six-game homestand against the Cubs and the Braves, and then four on the road against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yeah, good time to play the Pirates, too. Because uh, you'd imagine probably some pieces off that team by that point. Getting a little getting a little nice there. But, um, yeah, next few weeks are, are massive to the Philly season in all kinds of ways. Uh, some really big series, like you just mentioned, and then trade deadline where – We'll see what kind of addition this team can make. I would be shocked if we if we get through the trade deadline without making something. The last few seasons we have, you mm-hmm. know, it hasn't always been like the big, the big splash or anything. Um, but Steam has been aggressive at the deadline the last few years, and I would say that this team is better suited and better positioned than any of those teams really. Um, at this point, I, I it's it's kind of funny how we like remember seasons, um, but the Phillies like record right now is around where it's been the last like three or four years um but it feels so different and i I actually don't know i don't know like how close we were to the wild card and stuff like that in a lot of those years but um i i don't feel like last year was was worse but um i don't feel like the seasons before either that we were even in a wild card spot at this point um but it's, it's tough to remember stuff like that exactly but it does feel like the phillies have a more like tangible hold on you know like being a playoff team than they have in years past and i think that has to kind of energize this is this is a huge season i think to to make that kind of push because we were talking you texted me i was away the trey turner news um we haven't even talked about that because if you want to if you want to attract guys like that and if you want to if you want to encourage john milton to spend more money i think you have to make the playoffs because yep. i i don't think it's without reason and without cause for him to kind of throw his hands up and be like why the hell should i co-sign right. 30 more million dollars um, for a guy if we can't even make the playoffs. I actually I don't think that's an unreasonable question to yeah. ask. <laughs> um, so we'll I see. did find out last night on the broadcast, too, they were talking about it since the Phillies were like on the cusp of getting into that wild card spot. The new wild card rule is very strange to me. So if you're the last wild card, the team you're playing, it's a best of three series, which I'm cool with, but all the games are at the better record team oh. so the Phillies even if they are in that final wild card spot they don't get a single home playoff game unless it's they dumb. win that series why don't you just, like why not just have like the first at the worst team and then the last two like yeah well I don't know or just do like you know one 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 right but I guess like if you don't want them to be traveling a whole lot like yeah, yeah. but I just think that's dumb I was like that's that is a dumb rule I didn't realize unfair. you set up that way um all the more reason to <laughs> to get a better wild card yes. spot. The uh like you said, it feels different this year. Like it just feels like this is a team that is worth investing in at the trade deadline, not making an Ian Kennedy type move and not making, you know, one of those fringe moves, you know, as Drupal Cabrera and Wilson Contreras and stuff like that. Uh or Wilson Ramos, I'm sorry. Um they, I feel like they could go out and make a big swing if they feel like it can really continue to change the trajectory of this team. And if they can weather, you know, the storm of, of Bryce coming back at the earliest end of August, early September, and get him back. Obviously, they were shown on the broadcast last night, Gene Segura has the pins out of his hand now. He was taking, you know, ground balls, and he looks ahead of schedule. If you can weather getting to the point where those guys are coming back, Get yourself a legitimate starter for this rotation to go behind Nola and Wheeler because, like you said, that I think is the biggest issue right now for this team. Oddly enough, the bullpen has been very good (laughs) (laughs) over the past like two months. Like, they have the best, like, on paper, they are the best bullpen over the last month, which is insane to think about from where this team was. Yeah. I you know I you know what I'd love to look into maybe I'll do this for next week, the the like high tide between Reese Hoskins and the bullpen because uh, Hoskins has also been amazing for the last month. Um, 
I think it would actually be hilarious if somehow those two are connected. Where like whenever Hoskins slumps, the bullpen is bad, and vice versa. Like, because um, Reese has been great, player of the week. Yeah, I mean he's he's playing like an MVP the last like three weeks. It's kind of stupid. <laughs> it blows my mind that there are people vocally out there saying everything Reese is doing right now is building his trade value. Yeah, I, that's I think that's the the wrong way to uh I think to look at that. if you are thinking of trading a guy who has been on this team since 2018 and has kind of like inserted himself as like one of the bona fide leaders in the clubhouse, a guy who wants to be here and removing like a good vibes and good player off of this team at the trade deadline to go get what? Like what are you going to get that's going to improve this team by getting rid of Reese Hoskins? I think that does nothing but make a, a huge detriment to the locker room by getting rid of a guy like Reese Hoskins. Like, I, I just don't know how people are even, like, thinking about trading him at the deadline. Yeah, I mean, he's one of your, your best hitters, too. Like, yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't get it. Um, Kyle Schwarber also thinks every month is June, which is great. <laughs> Happy June 35th to the Nationals. Um. Just laying it on thick, like Kansas City barbecue. It I mean. is a beautiful sight watching him. And it's, he has 25 home runs this year. He is leading the National League in home I, runs and is only behind Aaron Judge for the Major League lead. It has not felt that way at all, I have to say. And somehow he will not be an all-star. <laughs> because he's hitting like 220. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. He's got the best OPS on the team, so we'll take that. I will say, I'm very nervous about him being in the home run derby. <laughs> yeah, historically not, um, not, a, not great. a great spot. Not a great spot <laughs> to be in. Unless you're Bobby Abreu. Yeah. It's about the only time it's worked out for us. I, uh, I'm i just nervous if, if he gets tabbed for the home run derby that it could mess some things up. Because, like, he's not your traditional leadoff guy, but he's sparking – wins for this team by putting us up one nothing in the top of the first or in the bottom of the first yeah at home and you know there was a video we tweeted out of uh you know sold out citizens bank park on sunday night singing high hopes i was like i i have yearned for this since you know 2011 to be happening like sold out crowd after a win it was just like this is what we need and, you know, Sunday Night Baseball bringing up, oh, it's been 10 years since the Phillies made the playoffs. It's like, all right, pal. We get it. We understand. We, we've No one is more aware than us. <laughs> we've gone through it. Um, I I was thinking about this, too. I, I was listening to a podcast. I forget what it was. They, um, they brought up that we need more singing at sporting events, similar to, like, European soccer. Like, more chance? Yeah. Well, there's a great one um that teams will do it's like it, it's i don't know the tune exactly i can't remember the thumb it, but it's like uh can we play you every week <laughs> um and i think we should be singing that to the nationals actually yes. it's like we would love to play you every week actually if we could never yeah. forget that tweet from august 25th 2020 that <laughs> it has been in a i don't know the numbers but it has been a dismal record i for them. i uh, think i saw since, somebody bring up the record I think I saw 21 and 10 against the nationals since then I don't, know if that's, I don't know if that's true, but um, let's see. Whoever, if the same person is in charge of the Twitter account, I think uh, we should send them like a fruit basket or something. Like, thanks. Thanks for, thanks 20, for sitting. Phillies are 25 and 10 since 25 that 25 and 10. Jesus. The Nationals final score tweet last night was great. Too. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> it's a tough beat. Um, But I was like thinking, I was like, we need more. I was like. Three of the four Philadelphia teams have great songs paired yeah. to them. You know, after every touchdown, you have Fly Eagles Fly. You have High Hopes after every Phillies win. You have Here Come the Sixers. I was like, we we have great, you know. The musical. Flyers even had that Orange and the Black song yeah. for a little bit. Um, I think that kind of fell off the wagon. And, you know, during their, their mini run, even though it wasn't like a Flyer-specific song, like Knock Knock by yeah. Mac Miller was attached to them. Um I was like, we're lucky. We we have uh, some decent music attached really, to our music teams. city. Uh, sh- yeah, take that, Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, looking at 
how things could shake out at the trade deadline too. It's like, it's one of those weird things where the Mets don't really need anything and I don't expect them to make any big splash moves. You could see the Braves, you know, go out and and do what they typically do at the deadline. But division wise, like I feel like the Phillies, if they want to go get a guy, they're not going to be in competition with the division per se. Yeah, you're just going to be in competition with, like, the Dodgers. Which yeah. is <laughs> a, uh, a hard team to outbid. And I, I rattled off uh, on the most recent episode that I recorded um, just a list of guys who the Phillies should be looking at pitching-wise to go out and get. Um, and there's a lot. Like, there's a lot of bad teams out there. It's just a matter of who are the Phillies going to be willing to give up which we talked about a couple weeks ago to go and get these guys because it's going to take a lot. So like Frankie Montas obviously is like the, the prize gem of this trade deadline. Everyone wants him though. And now he's injured. Yes. So that's going to change some things. And it's a nebulous injury too. It's not like, you know, 10 day IL or whatever. Like it's, Oh, he's got a back thing. We see how he's doing. Uh, right. I said Luis Castillo from the Reds. I feel like he's just a guy that needs Steve a fresh Price, start. though, I think, yeah. too, which, which would be tough. Because he has is, he is an extra year. Yeah. And, uh, so uh, I listed off four guys from the Rockies. Uh, <laughs> Herman Marquez, Kyle Freeland, Antonio Sensatella, Chad Cool. I don't think the Rockies will move all of them, but you should at least be calling and seeing what it's going to take to get all four of them in whatever capacity. Um Noah Syndergaard should be the no-brainer, I think, of this trade deadline. Um, I Oddly enough, put Cole Irvin on that list. He's had a pretty solid season for a very bad Oakland A's team. Yeah. Um, and then I said Madison Bumgarner, which I think you could get him from the Diamondbacks for a cheap price, being that you know he's much older. And then if, if the Phillies really want to swing for the fences and go get a guy to have a big three in the rotation, see what the Diamondbacks want for Zach Gallen. I doubt the, I, I doubt from the perspective that the Diamondbacks want to trade Zach Gallen. Yeah. But at least see what it's going to take. And if you feel comfortable doing what it's going to take, if I'm Dave Dombrowski, I'm doing it. I could see. I don't think we're going to be that aggressive. But, yeah. Uh, I certainly wouldn't hate the move either. He's also a guy that I think could get more traction now that Frankie Montas is hurt. Yeah. Uh, Montas was like the bell of the ball. I think like yeah. ten teams have penciled him into their uh, <laughs> into their rotation at by this point. Um, yeah, I mean Dombrowski's you know famous too for uh, for staring at the youth players and <laughs> drawing a finger across his neck like <laughs> you're not making it here, Chief. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna be a Cleveland Guardian, <laughs> who oddly enough are like even hotter than the Phillies right yeah. now. Um, but these are the teams in last place right now as we sit here on July 6th. The Nationals, who I'm sure are going to have a fire sale. Um, the Cincinnati Reds. The Colorado Rockies. Baltimore Orioles. Kansas City Royals. And Oakland A's. Those Don't teams the are Orioles be... have a better record than the, uh, the Angels? Yes, they do by one game. Ain't that just a bitch? <laughs> Orioles are thirty-eight and forty-four. The Angels are thirty-seven and forty-five. <laughs> the poor Angels, man. <laughs> How do you have both Donnie and Mike Trout? And this is what it turns into. Just insane. Further proof that baseball is just a dumb sport. You and have then, two generation-defining players, and it just doesn't matter. And I know he's injured, but they spent a boatload of money on Anthony Rendon too. Just doesn't matter. Does not matter. <laughs> They went and signed pool holes when they signed him. Still get it. Josh Hamilton. Doesn't matter. And I mean, you got to think the Angels are going to be, so you might even think the Rangers could be sellers of some of the guys that are like on one year deals. Um, would not mind getting Brad Hand ba- or uh, Brad Miller back <laughs> on this team. Um, this team's a little bamboo. <laughs> the Tigers are, are pretty much, you know, out of it. The. The the AL East is going to be interesting because four of those teams are not going to make the playoffs. You got to think at least two will. Um, but right now, like the Toronto Blue Jays are in fourth place in the AL uh, East, and they're forty five and thirty eight. It's stupid. The AL East in just general is um, just a bloodbath. I feel like it has been for a few years too. Um, just that's 
Is that is that probably the best division in baseball? I think it has to be. I would say so, especially since, as you predicted, the Giants have fallen off big yeah. time this year. Um, and I mean, the Pirates are bad. The Cubs are bad. It's going to be interesting to see what the Marlins do and where they are come All Star break and trade deadline. They're only one game under five hundred. Yeah. Um, and they still have a positive run differential. Um, I mean, they're only they're th- they're what. They're three back in the wild card, too. And they have arguably the Cy Young Award winner this year? Yeah. Trade deadline is going to be, I think, a lot of people staring at each other to see who blinks first. Absolutely. Which... Who's going to set the market here? Yeah. And I don't remember the last time the trade deadline was like that for baseball. Where it was kind of like, let's just see how it shakes out, and then we go and you know make our moves. It, it has always felt like that was like the way it was going to be leading into the trade deadline, and then somebody was just like, oh, I'm going to make a splash. Right. Um, and I think we're just waiting to see who that team is that's going to make a splash. Um, I don't know if the Phillies trade for a bat either, which is strange. Typically in years past, you know, yeah. we're also looking for that bench bat. But I think a lot of the guys that they've called up from, you know, double-A, triple-A have filled in very nicely especially Derek Hall um you know Jairo Munoz has been great off the bench in Gene Segura's absence and they're finally letting the kids play and kind of just work out the the struggles at the major league level when they do play and I think that's been a, a big part of why the Phillies are where they are right now is because they've lengthened their bench by letting guys who are in their organization play yeah Stott's you know working through it still but Someone that you're at least uh, counting on for some off days. Like, it's nice. I think uh, I think the Phillies are in a, a pretty healthy spot now, which is bizarre. <laughs> There's bizarre. one bat that they've been tied to, and I wouldn't hate it because I feel like you could get him relatively cheap, and it's Andrew Benintendi. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, has the Dombrowski ties from when he was with the Red Sox. He's on a bad Royals team. You could probably get him for a lower-end prospect or two. And to get a guy who can play defense like Ben Intendi can, and he's hitting over 300 this year, I think that's a very solid piece to plug into like center field in a platoon situation potentially, or just be your guy in center field uh, for the second half of the season. Play him in right field um, so you can move Castellanos back to DH. I think that would help this lineup a ton as well. Bryce being out with injuries like in a weird roundabout way kind of good uh, because you were locked in to DH with him and now you can kind of shuffle around Mm -hmm. a little bit better with the lineup like um, he was your DH for like the rest of the season (laughs) and now you at least have like a little bit more flexibility obviously you're missing Harper but um, it's in a way I think good news you know it's a good it's bad news but some good news right you know uh, that type of thing and Bryce did speak to the media this week and said that he will be back this year and he hopes to play right field again this year, which is very interesting. Um, I mean, it is nice in a way that he's kind of getting this time off to also let his elbow rest. Right. Um, so we'll see how that kind so of shakes uh, out. Is that the Serenity Dominguez uh, treatment? <laughs> just like, uh, just let it rest for like six months and then uh, get the surgery after two anyway. Speaking of Sir Anthony, isn't it just fucking crazy how good at managing a bullpen Rob Thompson is? I don't even know if he's, like, good at it or if he's just competent. And we're just so used to incompetent. Like, I think so often we have to remind ourselves that we were, like, in what I think you could quantify as abusive relationships. (laughs) Yes. And now we're, like, in a safe space where we're, like, welcomed and loved. And it's, like, just a totally different experience. Like... Rob Thompson is going to go with the guys he knows can pitch during those innings and everything. Uh, and then Girardi would just be like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to throw the guy out there who had success five years ago. It, it is just insane to me how we had to suffer through not only a pandemic shortened season with Joe Girardi, all of last year that, you know, unfolded with Joe Girardi and then have to deal with April and May this year. Of him. Like, imagine if Rob Thompson was the manager in the month of May, or even from the beginning of this season, where this Phillies team 
could potentially be. Yeah. It's <laughs> shocking. It's nuts. Shocking, honestly. Even just look at like his handling of Knievel, right? Where he has a blow up and he kind of just puts him off the side like listen, he's just going to get some like he's going to get some early game work. We're not going to put him in like high pressure situations. And look, he's he's bounced back a little bit now. I don't know that I think Girardi is constantly just keep throwing him in and uh, Gabe Kapler's like having him start tomorrow. Like, like that's the kind of nonsense we were dealing with. It's just wild to me. What? I haven't seen the Gabe Kapler threats. Have you? That's weird. <laughs> weird that Gabe Kapler isn't like the smartest fucking person in baseball all of a sudden. Weird. I do love the, the Rob Thompson memes of... He's the guy that would hold the door open at Wawa for you and then immediately try to run you over in the parking lot. Like a lifted Ram 250. (laughs) Uh, He definitely has a Yeti sticker and a Salt Life uh, sticker on the back. Definitely has a hitch on the truck. (laughs) And the way he's been managing, probably has those silver testicles hanging from him, too. He's like the guy, like... um, he was like dumping out yesterday's cooler water uh, <laughs> into the parking lot. He's got like the novelty Seven Eleven like yeah. growler cup. Much respect. Uh, love a good Todd Zalecki mid game news drop too. Gene Segura been fielding ground balls the past couple of days, and he said he thinks he can rejoin the Phillies before the ten to twelve week timeline. Oh, well, great news for him. The Phillies and my fantasy baseball team. <laughs> <laughs> so my IL is hurting. Like, I feel like so many, just because of the magnitude of player prices, that so many people have just forgotten that Gene's been out since May 31st. Yeah. Um, he got the pins out, like we said earlier in the show, which is great. He had three pins in his finger um, following the surgery that he got. And he said, the way it lo- the way we look right now, probably, I still have a couple of tests, gripping the ball, throwing, hitting. So if everything goes well the next couple of weeks, we might. Um, I've been doing some aggressive therapy, getting it moving. Uh, the more I move it, the quicker it will heal. I'll get mobility. And we'll, when mobility is 70 to 80%, I think that's enough for me to play. Which would be great. The Phillies dropped to 21 and 29 the night that he broke his finger. And since Gene Segura broke his finger, they are twenty-two and nine. So maybe, maybe he could stay. Maybe he could. <laughs> <laughs> you can hang out for a little bit. Who knows? Ugh. Nah, it's, it'd be good to have him back. And I mean, look at the guys who have filled in for him too: Bryson Stott, Jairo Munoz, Matt Veerling, Johan Camargo, and Nick Maton. Like they've all stepped up, and I think that's been the biggest thing too with the Phillies when they've had injuries this year is. In years past, it felt like they were just plugging in old guys or, like, you know, nobodies that we knew or guys that were brand new to the major leagues who had never played the position before at that level. They have guys who have stepped up and, and really proven themselves to to be major league players in the absence of some of these guys, whether it is, you know, any of those guys I just named, whether it's, uh, you know, Mickey Moniak defensively um, making great catches in the outfield, whether it's Derek Hall, you know, just mashing home runs at the major league level. Like that's been what's kept this Phillies team afloat. Yes. Matt Veerling has been, I think the surprise of the Such season a for me. great, not really on my radar before the year. And uh, he's been, he's been important, like rotational piece for us. And it's going to be scary if he's potentially traded. <laughs> yeah. He's only 25 too. I know. Like I don't kind of came out of nowhere for me. Um, what do you think the Phillies do at the deadline? I think I think a starting pitcher because I think Eflin and Ranger Suarez being out. Eflin is like a recurring thing; like he's every year kind of hard to rely Same on. Same injury too. Um, Ranger Suarez, it just seems like maybe you know you're bound to get hit with injuries at some point. But um, I I would be pretty surprised if we if we don't make a move for a starting pitcher. I will say I was pretty impressed with Christopher Sanchez last night going yeah, five innings. That was um that was a big move, but you know. Can't count on outings like right. that with regular. And you know, you already saw, you know, you've seen like Nola and Wheeler. I think have to extend themselves a mm-hmm. little bit uh, in games. And while well, that's good, and they've been great, you don't really want to make that. Like, Wheeler did that so much last season, and we saw that it led. I, th- I think, among other things, but I think it was certainly a factor in his slow start to this season. But he's obviously been very much mm-hmm. the same Wheeler that he was last year. Um, 
and Nola has been, I think, pretty good this year. You know, he's yeah. put some of that inconsistency behind him, and he's been to pretty solid now. Um, but you know, you can't count on those guys. I think kind of eating innings for the rest of the year. You need um, to have four guys in this rotation. Yeah, like five. Like if you're a really good team, you have that fifth starter. You need you need Kyle Gibson to get his shit together because that he's be been great. pretty bad the past couple of outings. Um, but now with Ranger Suarez injured, with Zach Eflin injured, you definitely have to go get that starter. And I think if Eflin comes back, he comes back into the rotation. And then depending on who you go get at the deadline, starting pitcher wise, you can throw Ranger Suarez in the bullpen. And I think that helps extend your bullpen that much more. Right. I, I, I would be down for that. And we've seen Ranger have success out of the bullpen. He struggled a lot this year. Don't know how much of that has been, you know, the back issue that he's had. And also, let's not forget, Matt, Red Bull cans look out. Jojo Romero's <laughs> pitching at AAA right now. Great. Coming off Tommy John surgery. You gotta, you gotta love it. And I think, you know, you want to talk about a, a vibes guy. <laughs> that is Jojo Romero. Um, who... I don't think he pitched at all last year. Last time we saw him was 2020 or early 2021. Um, So, again, that's like if he's ready to go and you can throw him into the bullpen, that's another deadline acquisition that you don't really have to worry about spending resources on. Um, And then hopefully that just means one step closer to getting Jerry's Familia out of here. Please. (laughs) The... uh, little bit of NFL news, too, that has uh, taken the internet by storm. Baker Mayfield traded to the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, that's a uh, – like, that just randomly popped up for me, like, before I came over here. I was like, wow. That's, for a uh, conditional 2024 fifth-round pick. I got to tell you, I'm loving loving the Browns meltdown. Because we might get a, a DW uh, verdict this week or yeah. early next week see what the deal is there maybe the most irresponsible trade of all time mm-hmm. maybe maybe a, i think it barreling towards a worst trade ever because i don't know this guy might literally never play a snap again in the game of football which is fine by me it's fine by me and it is totally deserved by just i i don't know how anyone keeps their job after that no. i don't know how anyone keeps the team <laughs> i like that is such a colossal f up that I just I don't know how anyone walks away from that clean. I I don't get it. Yeah, we'll see how that all shakes out. Uh, Shout out to Baker. <laughs> glad you're free. Um, I don't know if it happened for you, but somehow Flyers Twitter made its way back to my timeline, and a lot of it was in part to President Pump, aka your brother. Yeah, uh, we were uh, we we're talking in the DMs a little bit today about the Flyers. Um, I, I also found out our backup goaltender has been. Uh, yeah, I was going to bring that up too. He's been. He's like in custody essentially with Basically, like, a, there's like some military service issue uh, where they're, I think I sent this they're accusing to him Dylan. of like having to uh, essentially like dodge military service. We obviously know everything that's happening between Russia and Ukraine at the moment. Um, but he was like picked up after practice one day and. Um, you have thought he had been poisoned and was like getting shuffled around all these uh, like military installments and then a hospital and the picture that you saw of him too is like really unsettling looking like he looks just i don't know it's yeah, just, <laughs> i was i really had not been uh aware of this at all until he had mentioned it to me this tweet is from july 3rd from slava malamid on twitter according to tass the would be at nhl flyers goalie ivan fedotov will be sent to serve on Novaya Zem- Zemlaya, an Arctic outpost. Uh, this, without a doubt, has been arranged by CSKA owner Igor Sechin, Putin's close friend, as retaliation for wanting to leave the KHL. Yeah, uh, tough. I, it's a crazy situation, um, even without the fire's angle, like just trying to leave your country to go to another country to work and being uh, detained essentially and forced into military services, uh, it's not great. So, hope uh, hope things improve there. But we've got the draft tomorrow with the Flyers. Looking forward to that. Pick number five. Pick number five. Will told me 
let's find the name here. Uh, Cutter, what's his last name? I don't know. We were, he was he was upset because he sent me a picture of Chet Holmgren, and then I had to break the news about Poku, who was just like, he like European <laughs> Chet. Um, he couldn't believe that there was two of them on the same team. <laughs> the, just he, he couldn't work with it. But apparently, uh, apparently the guy that we might be taking, this guy named Cutter, Will is is into the idea at least. Uh, he said he wouldn't love it, but um, let's see. Uh, he could be very good or he could be a bust, LOL. A very unflyers pick to not take a safe defenseman or two-way player and instead gamble the big scoring winger slash center actually takes hold and becomes a high scoring center. Um, he said, I don't love the pick if they do it, but I respect them actually taking a swing at greatness. So, and I told him, random 25-year-old from Latvia incoming. <laughs> That's the way. But we'll see. I'm looking I'm looking forward to uh, propagandizing a new a new flyer haven't thought about them <laughs> no in quite some time have not thought don't and, know if i've thought about them since the turn of the the year and honestly i think my life has been a little better for it i, I think the say. only thing i've paid attention to was claude drew and just questioning why he didn't want to get traded to colorado it's uh <laughs> you know you only have so much capacity in this brain here so it has not not really had the room the uh the thing that has taken up the space in my head, though, from the Flyers is is the Union and Team USA. Matt has a lot of uh, thanking and handshaking to do with with the Union because yeah. they qualified for the the Olympics for the first time since two thousand eight. Thank Christ! <laughs> Embarrassing that uh, that we missed missed as many Olympics as we did and missed the last one. We were Cup, in so. eighth grade the last time Team USA was in the Olympics. I remember it well. Um. Yeah, that was the. Uh, God, was that the? I think that was the Messi Olympics, actually. Um. Sucks. <laughs> <But> <laughs> it's good. It's thank Christ. Thank Christ we're back in it. And what's cool too is um the Olympics you get to take it's it's U twenty three teams, but you also get to take it's three players that don't fit that age requirement. So you get to see some senior guys go too, which would be a nice experience. Uh, good tournament. It's a ton of kind of stuff the U.S. has to be continually involved in. Um, it's embarrassing that we weren't qualifying for it, you know, every every cycle. But um, also surprised. I feel like it's it's strangely early. Um, you know, no, I you know what it is because the Olympics got delayed to last summer. So I'm thinking like we're there it is because the Olympics are supposed to be 2020. Um, that COVID still. <laughs> Still, still lingering. Still taking us for a ride, isn't it? Um, yeah, Jesus, God, the Olympics are coming up there now. Like, okay, nice. Uh, that's great, but yeah, um, it's good to be back. Union, you know, my advice to the Union is uh, stop drawing so many games. That'd be great. If we could a lot of clean sheets, a lot of clean sheets, which is great. But uh, could use could use those three, use three points. points. Yeah, that'd be great. That Do was that a... for me. That was an exhilarating win they had a couple Sundays ago, though, to get the full three points. Yeah. Would have been nice to get them against Columbus, though. Um, I forget when their next game is, but I believe they're on the road. It is uh, this weekend against D.C. United. That's it. Pretty pretty bad team, D.C., so it should be... Uh, Some decent matches coming up. Win. They got D.C., Inter-Miami... <clears throat> Uh, New England, Orlando City, and Houston for the rest of July. Yeah, it's um east the 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 east especially, but uh, you know the the race for supporters shield in general heating up. It's gonna be uh it's gonna be a tough one to finish. Um, I don't know that the Union have have like the offensive ability to, to kind of compete with some of these other top teams. Obviously, like if you're asking me for playoffs, this team could certainly do it. But I think for like you know, the rest of the regular season. Well, it's tough when you can't get Gareth Bale. <laughs> yeah, and, and LAFC apparently is, like, interested in Jesse Lingard, so we'll see see how that goes. Gareth Bale stuff is, like, we'll see how much he actually plays. Um, he's, like, the T on him, too, is that he's just looking for a place that he can train and, like, stay in shape until the World Cup, and then, like, that he's done. <laughs> like, he's just kind of, uh, he seems like he's checked. Like, there's people talking about him retiring from like club games right now and then just like 
finding somewhere to train and then playing the World Cup and just being done, um, which is hilarious because it's very often the opposite. People retire from international duty to like extend their club career, um, whereas Gareth Bale was contemplating retiring from club, <laughs> his club career to uh, just focus solely on uh, on playing for Wales. So unreal, unreal stuff. Union, one of four teams right now with at least 30 points in the yeah. MLS, which is very nice. It's LAFC, Austin. They're a tough team to the beat. Red Bulls in the Union. Tough team to beat the Union. Austin are like probably the most fun team to watch in MLS right now. Just scoring for fun. Are they yeah. relatively new? Uh, yeah, Austin, I think this is only their... Don't get mad at me. I think this is their third season. Um, yeah, they're, they're one of the newer... Uh, newer newer clubs in MLS which is nice to see because it's not you know it's not often a lot of these teams that have come out the last few seasons have have hit the ground running necessarily 2018 Um, yeah so this is their fourth wow um yeah so some of the the newer expansion teams have been eh, hit and miss hit and miss um but it's tough too because I mean just starting from literally nothing (laughs) and then just the expansion draft so um but it's, it's good to see a team kind of uh, turning into a, a little bit of a contender now. And, you know, Paxton Aronson's just a stud. He's a stud. Uh, looks just like his brother, too, who quietly, um, <laughs> the, the stars and stripes are lining in Leeds right now. Uh, Tyler Adams confirmed go to Leeds. Nice little American contingent building. So if you're a... Uh... U.S. soccer fan, there's your Premier League squad. <laughs> there, it is. I mean, honestly, that's why you have so many Everton fans and Fulham fans. There's always like the full America, uh, kind of contingency, even going back to uh, just the old days. So we'll see. And uh, nice fun note, Matt Survivor season forty three back September twenty first. great to be back it is great uh also tyson on that uh the the challenge show said that he came back so that he could just like demoralize people have not had a chance i haven't watched yet either i just saw like uh you know how google like suggests like articles for you to read it was like former survivor contestant (laughs) says he came back to you know just mess with people uh so i'm going back to school so i've been uh studying uh, I don't know, like early high school level math. Uh, so I've been like eyeballs deep in Khan Academy algebra videos <laughs> and a uh, college algebra textbook. And tonight when I go home, I'm learning some geometry. So that's been my life. <laughs> it's been, uh, I desperately need sports to come back. So I have, uh, I, can, I can kind of, cause right now I have so much, I have so much more free time that I'm like, well, I guess I should study. <laughs> so I should study math. <laughs> oh, man. That's all we got for you guys tonight. Make sure you're following us on Twitter and Instagram and all the socials at Underground PHI. Like I said at the top of the show, we are giving away uh, the new, as Kyle Schwarber hits a solo home run to tie the game up 1 1 in the 26. Happy happy June 36th. Um, we're giving away Wolverine number 22 with the Brian Dawkins variant cover. It's our pin tweet on Twitter, so go check that out and enter. We're announcing the winner on August 8th, uh, so you got plenty of time to enter, about a month. So go check that out. Follow Matt on Twitter at Matt Castorina. Follow me at KBIZZL311. Check out the website, undergroundsportsphiladelphia.com, for all of our written content. Subscribe to the podcast feed on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. And, of course, subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. Uh, Click the bell icon, hit the like button, and, of course, comment down below uh, everything that we talked about tonight, how you're feeling about it. And uh, also, go give a a big congratulations to a core four member of Underground Sports, Dom, as he is now an engaged man, the second one. Uh, to get engaged in the history of the podcast. So go congratulate Dom as well on his engagement. Uh, big thank you to our sponsors, Main Auto LLC, Douche Arms Pro, Foot Security 21, Security Systems, Paul J. Gillespie Incorporated, Mark Ronchetti, CPA LLC, and the Dental Wellness Center of Vineland. Tom Shades Pickup, Kenwood Beer, and Bino Board 
All their information is linked in the show notes and the podcast uh, description on YouTube. This has been a uh, hashtag not a sponsor, our Wendy's episode 444 uh, of Underground Sports Philadelphia. For Matt, I'm KB. Until next time, we are signing off. Peace.